Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Agrotech again. I hope you all are staying at home, staying healthy and safe. Please do not forget to maintain your personal hygiene as well as social distancing to prevent from COVID-19 infection. Please also do not forget to like and share my channel. Please do not forget to subscribe my channel. And I also hope you will be giving me feedbacks and suggestions on the comment section below. I am going to give you some set of information today and it will be related with current activities and future scope of biotechnology. But I am going to give you all information with reference to Nepal. Today I will be covering uh, what are the current biotechnology activities in Nepal and I'm going to separate them or divide them into research level, commercial or industrial level, publication level and I'm also going to discuss about future scope of biotechnology but all of the information or everything will be in reference to Nepal. I hope you guys have really enjoyed my previous video where I have given the general definition, application, fields and history of biotechnology especially on agricultural sector so if you like if you want to watch this video or if you really have missed this video at that time please do not worry about it because i'm gonna give you a link on the description section you can find the link on the description section and you can watch it and guys please keep loving my videos and I hope you're gonna like and share my videos, you're gonna like and share my channel and I hope you all gonna subscribe my channel as well. And please leave your reply or leave your comment, leave your suggestion on the comment section. As I have mentioned earlier, today I'm going to discuss about some current biotechnology activities that are currently being done on the research section in Nepal, as well as some biotechnology activities that are currently being done on the commercial or industrial level. For both research and industrial or commercial level of activities, I'm going to touch agricultural sector and I'm going to touch plants which might include some plant hormones such as auxins or some plantlets they have developed through biotechnology process methods or mechanism and livestock where it might include vaccines for livestock some products they have developed through um, biotechnology process like dairy industry or some medicine to the livestock I would like to give a layout for um, biotechnology activities being done in Nepal and as I have already discussed like uh, I have separated the activities uh, based on research and industry and I have given them a level like research level and industry level but I also want to add the participation of government sector and non-government sector for both level of activities like participation of government for research and industry level and participation of non-government sector for research and interest level if we have to talk about the participation of government for carrying or doing uh, research level of activities and industrial or uh, industrial or commercial level of activities related with biotechnology in Nepal I found many government organizations and many government institutes they are working through uh, for example the biotechnology division of Nepal Agricultural Research Council Institute of Agriculture, Agriculture and Animal Science IAS from Tribune University, the Central Biotechnology Department of Tribune University, Nepal Academy of Science and Technology NAST which has Molecular Biotechnology Department and National Gene Bank of Nepal, Department of Plant Resource. Um, they, I found they are actively working through under the research and some commercial level of biotechnology activities there might be some other government organizations and institute they are working through but i found them more active and more yes more actively working through the participation from non-government sector is so interesting and amazing 
I found it so amazing because there are many organizations and institutes are working through both level of activities. Um, for example, Kathmandu University, which has biotechnology department and offering undergraduate and graduate program in biotechnology. Another one is Agriculture and Forestry University, which also has a graduate program on biotechnology. And another one I catching and important I found is Biotechnology Society of Nepal. Um, I found um, it would be so interesting and pioneering activities um, uh, on biotechnology being done so far. Another one uh, I would like to pronounce it as a Kalapas. I don't know how it pronounce Kalapas. I think it's right. Kalapas is a biotechnology industry is working for especially uh, industrial level of activities uh, for plant biotechnology especially. And another one is Biovac Nepal, uh, which is working for developing vaccines and um, some medicines, minerals for livestock. And I would like to thank Mr. Yagaras Pandey, a senior brother who is working in cattle research program in Rampur, who helped me to find some information, some website. Uh, they are related to the agricultural biotechnology uh, activities, especially for livestock. So I would like to thank him uh, once again. And if you even have some questions, you can ask him. He might have some answer for biotechnology related work in livestock now i would like to go with research activities and in this section i'm going to focus mainly uh, with the research activities they have done through the government sector and i'm going to cover first on the research activities for agricultural crops so in a general i found that the activities for the research is mainly focused with the screening and identification it may be because like uh, uh, because of uh, having poor capital and not having the proper sophisticated laboratory and human resource technicians maybe because of these factors we are still still on the screening process in nepal and um, um i found that government sector the uh, is for the research activities the gods are research activities uh, from the government sectors are highly associated with molecular marker in tissue culture. Um, I'm going to give you in-depth knowledge or in-depth um, class or lecture on the next uh, video where I will be giving the uh, procedure, mechanism, process and different tools and techniques of biotechnology. Uh, so, in general, molecular marker is a segment of DNA which is located in a certain location in a genome. So um, we use this uh, segment of DNA as a marker and we compare the other sequences and identify the um, sequence from the unknown sequence pool. And this is how we screen. So um, basically, uh, the government sectors is doing a screening and the identification process. And another one important is doing is the tissue culture as well. Uh, and I'm going to give you some best examples I have found through the storing the um, some articles and some going through the some websites through the government sector but uh, I have to mention like it's uh, uh, government sector uh, I found that uh, it doesn't have most uh, like improved website so going to the website I couldn't definitely find as much as information that I was trying to get um, however going through the some of the articles I found some of the examples that um, the government like uh, have done basically interesting jobs through the, for the agricultural biotechnology to the agricultural crops especially so I'm going to give you some examples based on my understanding based on my my study to the some of the articles and going through the some website but again i will tell you the website it doesn't help much it did not help much for me um first example is the assessment of genetic diversity in cereals fruits and citrus it is done through the narc and 
yeah i have already told this is also a um, process of screening and identification but i am not sure how they have done um yeah but basically they have done the assessment of genetic diversity in cereals it also helpful to identify the phylogeny trait and identify like make the phylogeny tree and identify the descent um, descent parents so it will be helpful in the next generation to do the crossing and some like uh, like what back like crossing eggs especially especially making hybrids so it might be in, in one of the helpful information that i have grab from the narc website and another one is the production of double haploid line in rice and they made it to f1 generation that's so interesting as uh, do you know the rice is a self-pollinated crop and it have the higher chance to get in depression but the the double haploid line they will be really helpful to avoid these in depression in sorry yeah in depression that's so interesting i have found like it's one of the interesting work done from narc and i am not again sure how they have made the double haploid line i have to study more about what are their procedure but in a general i am going to give you the detail in depth lecture on the another video and the another one is develop the iso enzymes and dna profiles of crops uh, they have uh, like uh, toss many of the crops as possible like all of the indigenous many of the indigenous not all many of the indigenous crops some commercial crops some of the vegetables and some cereals as well they have uh, like est extracted dna and then they identified the, the sorry not they develop the profiles, DNA profiles of the crops. It will again helpful to develop the phylogeny tree in mean, the identification of decent parents and might helpful for um, doing this, some crossing works later on. So it's also one of the important like tasks they have done, but basically it's also almost related with the point first, like assessment of genetic diversity in cereals and fruits and other. Um, yeah, they are most associated with the screening work the another one is in vitro propagation and they have made the pathogen free potato plants and it also through the narc uh yeah maybe and um, i hope so they have done the made stem tissue culture um it's in vitro we it stands for tissue culture in agriculture especially we call tissue culture here and um the virus free pathogen free Plantlet production is one of the yes really amazing work done through the NARC and they are doing these uh, activities uh, still. Um, I'm not sure about that variety what they have or cultivar they have developed because it's not written like I'm not sure it's not written but I couldn't find through the website. So I'm not sure about the cultivar name. You, if you have anyone uh, like is working with NARC you can ask them and uh, like uh, ask them to give the name of the cultivar but i'm not sure because i couldn't find i have tried to find it but i couldn't find and um, yes now farmers really don't have to worry about the pathogens for the potato and i'm not sure who is pathogen maybe they haven't target the special pathogen maybe it's for the um like a range of pathogens maybe they have done the apical meristem culture i'm not sure because the uh, i have already told the website is not really helpful but i know pathogen free potato plant they have developed so it's one of the interesting and one of the appreciative work they are doing and they have done and another one is the transformation of iptg into the wheat cultivars um, such as passing lemon on Puno one Look, this is the amazing work done through the Tribune University, the Central Department of Biotechnology, and you know, wheat. They have transformed the IPT gene. This gene is from the agrobacterium. They have transferred it to the wheat, and IPT gene uh, will help to increase the cytokine level in wheat. It means it will cytokine is the one of the important plant growth hormone. It will help to grow the root and shoot. So it is obviously important uh, for the wheat to grow uh, so these uh, cultivars the transformed cultivars are passing lemon and annapurna one and it is done through the tribune university is so amazing and uh, what else yes 
i'm not sure how they have transformed there are different ways to transform so i will give you the examples or how we can do the transformation in the another video in this section i'm going to give you the short information or brief information about the activities current and the previous activities uh, done through the government sector to improve the um, quality of production and the productivity in livestock sector in agriculture um, livestock is inevitable um, upon days of the agriculture we uh, always like think about the plants in agriculture but not only the plants that livestock is also one of the important an aspect of agriculture um, but i also found that the uh, screening like uh, not the screening the activities from the government sector to the livestock in the biotechnology is also under the screening and identification stairs and um, while we talk about the livestock um, we do have different uh, like um, uh, different uh, species it comes under the livestock like the chicken and importantly the cattle and swine like uh, pork and goats However, I found uh, the information more uh, more related with cattle and I did not find enough information for poultry, swine and goat. Uh, the um, government website I have already mentioned is it did not help me much and I am making this video from Australia. I have to depend with online resource available but it's so sad to say I couldn't find much information through the government website so based on the conversation with one of the senior working with um, cattle research program narc he's a correspondent i have already mentioned i would like to thank him and with the basic conversation with him and based on the some online resource available i have found some of the information they are uh, like uh, they are related with biotechnology activities they are doing uh, through the government sector so i'm going to give you some uh, examples that i found is i found important and the interesting um, for you so first i would like to give you one example this is the molecular characterization of sega toxin producing e coli strain in cow's milk and is doing doing through the NARC cattle research program and do you know sega is a um, is a one of the um, is a toxin is a like toxin it can produce the different kind of bacteria but i found that narc is uh, like um, doing characterization it's just a characterization i don't know what they gonna do after the characterization it's just understanding of sega to to uh, toxin producing e coli strain one of these strain e coli strain it produces the sega toxin and this toxin has killed more than 1 million people worldwide so is one of the interesting um, like uh, interesting um, 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 like what is the toxin producing E. coli uh, so um, I found like it uh, the government has to do more about it but I found it's just a molecular characterization um, and do you know the cigar uh, toxin doesn't have any treatment and in the um, South Asian country like the Asian countries Nepal India Pakistan they found this cigar toxin producing E. coli in more and much amount but I have tried to find the data how many people have been like uh, killed or how many people been suffering to the Sega toxin in Nepal. I couldn't find any relevant information through the Central Bureau of Stat. So I don't have much information about how many people are suffering through the Sega toxin in Nepal. But I know Sega toxin is uh, like one of the deadliest toxin and it have killed more than 1 million people in worldwide. So uh, there, there might have like many things to do with it. But Nepal government like through the research, cattle research program, they are doing molecular characterization. It's just a characterization. And another one is the study antibiotics residues in milk. Uh, it is also the general screening process. The antibiotics, yeah, we know. In every um, sectors, uh, like in livestock sector, like in the poultry, goats, uh, livestock, we using antibiotics, and these antibiotics come to the uh, uh, come to the milk as a residue, small proportion of antibiotics, and we human being are consuming this milk. And do you know residues? The antibiotics residues, uh, once we consume, it will cumulative. Uh, it will 
cause the cumulative effect later on and it might cause the anti like antibiotic resistance so it's not really good so the narc is also studying the antibiotic residues in milk another one is the evaluation of protective immunity and longevity of hemorrhagic septicemia vaccine is also through the narc and um this is also the evaluation um i don't know how they are doing evaluation process but the it's to the uh, immunity system and how uh, the longevity immunity and the longevity um the hemorrhagic septicemia is a bacterial disease and there is a vaccine available for it and the narc is just evaluating how it protective and how what is the longevity of the AS vaccine it's just a general uh, like research and another one i found is the assessment of major reproductive hormones in cyclic and non-cyclic uh, crossbreed dairy cows um i don't know um, how they are assessing and what are the uh, like what are the main like uh, the factors they are associated with the hormones and um yeah they it's just a general screening they are just doing the assessment of the reproductive hormones for the both cyclic and non-cyclic crossbreed cows and um it might be uh, like helpful for uh, just developing a hormone profile um i'm not sure what would be the ultimate aim, aim of doing the assessment of the reproductive hormones um so these are the general activities that i found a bit interesting and these are being done through the narc cattle research program and i know narc also is doing the in vitro fertilization in cattle and the some of the vaccines and antibiotics production they are also doing the some of the vaccines and antibiotic production through the nepal government but still still is not clear i have tried a lot to find through the website what kind of vaccines and antibiotics they are producing but i would i became unable to find the exact information but um i found the information that the government is producing vaccines and antibiotics some antibiotics and some vaccines to the cattle but um, with um, sad face i have to say i did not find much information through, for the other livestock components such as chicken and goat but um, from my experience uh, through the undergraduate i know the there are some antibiotics and vaccines available to the poultry as well however i'm not sure if the nepal government is making these vaccines for the poultry as well there might be some other non-government organizations associated with it and i could not find the good like website for the goat research program so i i became totally unable to find the information as i have already mentioned i am making this um, video i am giving this information from australia so i have to heavily rely on the online resource or i have to like may like um, have to consult with one of the uh, relevant people but uh, the making contact from here would be really difficult that's why i had to uh, rely on the online resource and this most information i could grab from the online resource so um, there might be some other activities like uh, for the crops and animals as well through the government sector and um, because the website is not updated and there is not much information so um there might be some other activities there that i would like i became unable to find it um there are um like i have mentioned the photos on the previous um the previous slide so you can uh, like contact the narc and nepal agriculture research council and and you can uh, ask them what kind of antibiotics what kind of vaccines they are making or what is the current activities actually they are doing for these are the uh, like information this information i have grabbed from the online resource so far now research activities uh, from the non-government sector uh, i uh, i found that the government sector is highly associated with research activities and i i think so uh, like non-government sector do not have m like much involvement in the research in nepal uh but like involvement of mm, private sector or non-government sector would be really important in the biotechnology uh, research really but 
I couldn't find much uh, like research activities doing, doing through the non-government sector and I have some examples what they are doing um, through the uh, some other institute and some other organization they don't belong to government so I'm going to give you some examples here first is uh, like um, training and short course classes about tissue culture this is doing through the Calapas uh, I would like to pronounce it as a Calapas it's a biotechnology industry and the another one is the Kiat Kathmandu University which has uh, which introduced the biotechnology curriculum in the undergraduate and graduate program first so yeah they are really doing very good on introducing the syllabus like they are uh, they have given the light that biotechnology is really uh, interesting and really necessary science and another one is the Kathmandu University. They have the, the lab research on tissue culture, animal cell culture, and bioinformatics as well. The bioinformatics is a new concept, but the KU Kathmandu University is also uh, in, including bioinformatics as a course um, curriculum. But I'm not sure how much volume they are giving the um, uh, giving under the lecture. And they just mentioned through the website. Really, the website problem is really a big biggest in Nepal I found through the making this video. The KU, KU Kathmandu University website mentioned they have done the they are doing the lab research on the tissue culture, animal cell culture and bioinformatics but I'm not sure what kind of tissue culture they are doing but I know they have done they are doing some of the tissue culture activities. And another one is the uh, AFU Agriculture and Forestry University they have master program for the uh, biotechnology so really it's given a light that biotechnology needs to be promoted needs to be um, enlightened because it's a really interesting and scopeful subject and another one is AFU also has the biotechnology syllabus for undergraduate program as well maybe it not like uh, maybe they have a uh, few courses to be like few subjects not a few so the few course like in different semester the undergraduate student have to study biotechnology so it's really interesting now publications um this is my personal category i put the publication under the research activities as um, publication it stands like it stands for something else has been proven once something else published it means like in a journal or in anywhere it means uh, like it's been proven or um it's a uh, like public matter and uh, in a science the publication in different journals it stands for like um, uh, something else has done to the research and something else has been proven so everybody has to know publication it comes under the research program so uh, for the agricultural biotechnology activities uh, and it's a publication i found some of the journals and some of the like platform they are doing the publication and i'm going to put both government and non-government sectors in this section i found the narc journal a uh, narc journal um, which is one of the interesting and one of the important science journal in nepal which is covering all of the agricultural research there and it also has the biotechnology agricultural biotechnology uh, articles there as well and another one is nepal journal of biotechnology which is through the biotechnology society of nepal this is one of the non-government organization and they are actively like uh, working to uh, working to uh, like make a publication on the journal and they have developed a Nepal, Nepal Journal of Biotechnology so it's a really appreciative and interesting work done through the non-government sector the Biotechnology Society of Nepal the another one is International Journal of Applied Science and Biotechnology this is the international journal and I found there are some articles being published through the Nepal uh, like some of the scientists from the Nepal as well and the another one is the university publication system in the Tribune University, Kathmandu University, Agriculture and Forestry University. This university has their own publication system and sometimes they do have the um, journal such as IAS journal, AFA journal, KU journal and they have included some of the biotechnology research articles there. So really interesting and um, yeah amazing work being done through the both sector for the research in biotechnology. Now, I would like to go with industrial or commercial activities for the biotechnology. Um, 
it includes many industries many agricultural industries many medicinal industries pharmaceuticals but i'm going to talk only about the agriculture but i found so like nepal is beat back on the industrial level for the biotechnology so there are very few products or very few things they are going through the they have gone or they are going through the industrial um, production so i'm going to give you some examples in the next section first i would like to cover the industrial activities or the activities that comes under the biotechnology um, industry from the government sector and i found some of the activities and i'm going to give you the examples here um i found that narc is doing tissue culture for the plants uh, i found they have they are doing the tissue culture for potatoes especially so uh, i have already mentioned the website did not help me much but i found just a generic information this is the tissue culture and they are doing tissue culture and they are developing plant plates so uh, it's not still under the commercial scale but however still this is uh, one of the economic um, activities they are do doing through the government sector so i put it under here but it's not in a massive scale though uh, i can say it's a, it can be economic maybe in future the another one is producing vaccines and antibiotics in livestock and it is through the nepal vaccine production laboratory this is the website i found in um internet um i'm not sure if the nepal vaccine production laboratory has changed its name uh it might happen like there might be different name for this but um as for the online resource i found through the internet the nepal vaccine production laboratory through the government of nepal in tripurasar they are producing vaccines and antibiotics to the li livestock but still i have to say i don't have much information what kind of vaccines and which antibiotics they are making and for like and which uh, animal they are targeting like the cattle or goats or poultry or pork i do not have much information but yeah still i do have information that nepal vaccine production laboratory is producing vaccines and antibiotics to the livestock still in a commercial level they are selling the vaccines throughout the nepal so it's one of the thumbs up kind of activities and another one is ivf now, this is through the nepal government they are doing the in vitro fertilization to the cattle and this and they are doing it in the commercial scale like they are storing sperm and they are they are like um, giving the ivf vaccine to the farmers cattle so is is also under the um, industrial scale that's so good and there are some paid conference and seminars through the uh, different uh, like uh, departments but in department of biotechnology through the narc and some other government institutes like the trivon university they are doing the some paid conference and seminars i'm not sure if it comes under the industrial activities but yeah still economic activities so i put it under here if we have to talk about the participation or involvement or contribution from non government sector to the um industrial level of production of um, agricultural biotechnological product is still very low very negligible i want to say negligible uh there might be different obstacles and different constraints to make it through however there are small uh, scale of activities still being done through so i have found some of the activities through the website or online resource studies uh, i'm going to give you some examples what non government sector are doing in industrial scale for agricultural biotechnology the kalapas uh, biotechnology industry is selling the uh, plant plates uh, developed through the tissue cultures um, they are selling the bananas and the some strawberries uh, plant plates so real interesting job they are doing through um, and this is in uh, industrial scale and another one uh, in nepal the one of the successful i think successful and most commonly known um, biotechnology industry is dairy industry uh, many different kind of cheese and yogurts they are making and selling and i know 
there is a one of the important uh, industry it's a small scale industry is in ilam they are making the goat cheese really you know the goat cheese is highly expensive and it's uh, considered as a one of the important uh, product and they are making cheese there so it's a one of the um, successful i want to say successful most commonly practiced um, biotechnology and industry is a dairy industry and another one important example is the some of the vaccines and antibiotics they are making for livestock and this is for the buyback private limited it is, it is in kavri palanchok district this is one of the uh, most commonly growing recent commonly growing um, industry in um, private sector and this is um, highly related with the developing vaccines i mean like uh, mineral compo- components and the antibiotics to the livestock but i still have to say the website did not help me much what kind of vaccines and antibiotics they are making the another one are the paid conference and seminars through the different um institutes such as kathmandu universities kathmandu universities such as not universities kathmandu university and agriculture and forestry university i hope so a of you also doing the conference and seminars because i found uh, um, in website they do have some seminars um so these are the activities i have found through the online resources there might be some other activities they haven't updated into the website might be like under shadow so you can find them and i have found there are different uh, organizations that are working through but what the other universities and biotech comp- com- companies are doing actually in nepal i don't have much idea about it cuz i can see there are many biotechnology organizations are working but they do not have very well developed website look Siram Niketan Biotech Private Limited even they don't have website the lead the global private limited the, they even don't have website so it it became really bit hard for me to find information um, however i found some gist uh, information from there and i'm wondering what they are actually doing and what the what the universities are actually working um, like uh, to the research and industrial scale of activities i'm not sure about it but I know uh, the AFU had recently made hand sanitizer and they sell it I think they sell it but um, maybe it wasn't limited to that they might have more other activities but I couldn't find really and um, you can uh, find some other like institutes and some other uh, like uh, organizations they are working in the ag- agricultural biotechnology and you can directly ask them from there cuz um, from Nepal it would be bit easy for you Finally the future scope of biotechnology and future and here like finally before touching future scope points i would like to discuss a uh, bit about background it mean why do we need biotechnology in Nepal in agriculture really i would like to discuss um, about some important points first is agriculture is first most gdp contributor and it is 27% if you go to the central bureau of stat data from 2017 um if we uh, like make a really effective and efficient uh, biotech industry then why can we uh, move the gdp contribution from 27 to 50 or 80 we can make it why not yes and we could be the um, one of the sustainable agriculture system and one of the important uh, like industry agriculture we can make agriculture is the one of the important and uh, economic industry and we can move the uh, gdp contribution from 27 to maybe up to 80 90 or even 100 why not and the another one is poverty is still one fourth if you go back to the central bureau of state data from 2019 you can find the poverty line is still one fourth it mean many of the people they are still cannot afford uh, the food items you know then if we have to um, like reduce the poverty line we have to generate some uh, employment or we have to uh, develop that kind of cultivars that can produce a bit more amount and it would help these people to feed so it biotechnology will comes here and another one is hunger 
and another one is unemployment rate and poverty related with hunger yes in the many of the hunger stomach we can feed through the biotechnology if we made the highly productive system highly productive agriculture system through the less input and less um, like resource implementation we can make the higher output through the biotechnology so we would be able to feed this hungry stomach so biotechnology comes here and the unemployment rate is still 1.4 percent if we make agriculture as a one efficient and economic industry we can give the employment to the people and we can uh, like uh, grab this unemployment people to the agriculture sector and biotechnology comes here really and finally agriculture is way to sustain life if you do not have anything to eat then what to eat how do you sustain your life so really biotechnology will help people to sustain their life and here finally the scope future scope of biotechnology in nepal do you know yes agriculture is ultimate way from farm to plate yes and we have some scope to make some efficient outcome from the agriculture in nepal so i'm gonna give you some examples some uh, related information that gonna be really scope uh, full in future through the biotechnology then first is we do have favorable agroclimate but we do have very poor soil nutrients so biotechnology will come here and may help to uh, develop that kind of cultivar that can just uh, like grow in poor uh, nutrient soil and give us the favorable or edible some plant product and another one is traditional cultivars and indigenous breeds we are still relying on the traditional cultivars and indigenous breed i don't mean to really avoid or really um, banish all of the indigenous cultivars and breeds we have to grow in a side by side to maintain them as a uh, like gene pool to um, make the cross breed or to make the uh, like um, grafting or Uh, some other um, propagation system so they are really would be helpful if you do not have anything but the indigenous cultivars and breeds they are really low productive so we have to make more production we have to feed the hunger people so the biotechnology would be scopeful to um, like make uh, the productive cultivars and make some improvements in the traditional cultivars we can also improve the traditional cultivars and indigenous breed to make them more productive and it is really um, like can make it through the biotechnology so it would be one of the scope for um, in future to improve some of the cultivars the another one is traditional practice of cultivation like it's not enough to produce more so we have to uh, make this kind of um, cultivars or some kind of uh, breed that really uh, will or that can produce more to feed the hunger people so biotechnology would be one of the scope to make more production here the another one is disease and insect problems in crops and disease in livestock so uh we are like facing many problems many problems in agriculture many diseases and infestations problem in crops and many diseases in livestock as well so biotechnology will come here it would be another scope to get rid of this insect pest infestation we can really make adaptive cultivars uh, we can really make adaptive uh, livestock breeds through the um, like um, uh then uh, like the mutation or through the um sequence or sorry through the addition or deletion process i'm going to give you uh, i have already told i'm going to give you some um, like in depth knowledge on the biotechnology methods in the next episode or next lecture yeah but you can or you have to know biotechnology can make the disease and insect uh, like free plants or resistant plant or this is an insect free or resistant livestock so there is a scope and another one is the urbanization and foreign unemployment you know the urbanization uh, it uh, like causing the land fragmentation it mean 
we do have limited land and urbanization is uh, taking away all of the cultivable lands into the cities so it's shrinking the agriculture agriculture area and the for, from the foreign employment population uh, like and they are going abroad and uh, they are like there is uh, minimal uh, like peoples are staying in agriculture sector so we do have uh, like uh, we can say labor scarcity in agriculture sector so there is a scope like um, we do have like agriculture is shrinking and we need to produce more the the only way to develop the high productive cultivars is through the biotechnology and the only way to like uh, develop the agriculture system that is labor efficient is through the biotechnology so there is a scope of biotechnology and the major portion of population is depending on agriculture yes depending on agriculture but we do not have uh, like productive agriculture system the biotechnology will come here to improve it and making it the uh, as a productive agriculture system although uh, there is a great scope of uh, biotechnology in agriculture in nepal to uplift or to improve the traditional agriculture system and traditional agricultural production system however we do have many constraints associated with it is biotechnology is one of the sophisticated science it need many sophisticated technology uh, many sophisticated labs and technicians resource but we are very poor to manage these things and first uh, constraint i would like to go is resource and first one is capital uh, from the government point of view and individual point of view we do not have enough capital to invest money in biotechnology research so this is the one of the important uh, like constraint which is hindering like uh, to implement uh, biotechnology in agriculture we do not have enough capital to invest and another one is instruments as i have already mentioned uh, biotechnology is a highly sophisticated science which need highly sophisticated tools and techniques and instruments such as pcr multi channel pipette and some other highly expensive and delicate instrument these are highly expensive first it um, it will cost much and another one is we do not produce and we have to rely on some other countries uh, on import so it would be another difficulty and another constraint in biotechnology sector in nepal and another one is technician sadly i have to mention that uh, the academic system of nepal is highly based on theory and many of the uh, like technicians they do have theoretical knowledge but biotechnology itself is a highly practical subject there should be a highly skillful and the experienced technician to work in biotechnology but we do have very negligible amount of technicians the another one is awareness this uh, goes under the knowledge and understanding many of us we do not have the proper knowledge and understanding about biotechnology what is biotechnology how it works why it need and even if you work on it like many of the people don't know how it works and what is really importance of biotechnology and for example if you develop one of the cultivar through the biotechnology if you have made the one of the adaptive cultivar and you go to the farmers at first they don't want to try just because they feel like they will feel it risky because they have even cultivated these things before so there is a gap there is a knowledge gap between the research and the farmer and there is really a gap of understanding and knowledge uh, between uh, people and the research institute to deliver the knowledge about the what is biotechnology actually is and the another one is biosecurity law and policies you know uh, once we established um, biotechnology lab we have to follow different laws and policies do you know uh, these labs uh, might Uh, create some of the waste biological waste that might have the different mutant and some harmful bacteria and it cannot go directly with the sewage and we have to uh, like um, uh, maintain a proper biosecurity uh, work inside the lab but nepal government have very uh, maybe very low level of biosecurity law and policies made for the biotechnology sector uh, so this is the one of the constraint and and 
and finally i have made uh, this content based on the uh, online resource available some of the website hunting and my personal experience as well so i hope uh, this video will help you to understand what is currently uh, being done under the agriculture sector in Nepal uh, in biotechnology and um, I hope it will help you to understand what are the government and non-government sectors are actually doing in agricultural biotechnology for both research and industrial level. So based on today's video, I would like to ask you why do you think biotechnology is really important in Nepal? Why biotechnology in Nepal? Uh, I hope you're gonna give me or you're gonna leave some uh, comment based on your understanding in the comment section below. I hope uh, many of the people will participate here. Friends, this much is for today's session. I hope this video will be helpful for you to understand biotechnology, biotechnology in agriculture and biotechnology in agriculture in Nepal. So if you are more interested or if you want to know more about biotechnology, keep watching my video, keep loving my video and I will see you in another video and I will give you more information about the tools and techniques about biotechnology. Uh, till then stay safe stay healthy and please do not forget to like and share my channel do not forget to subscribe my channel and please leave comment on the comment section below why biotechnology is important in nepal thank you see you on next video